Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. I'm coming to you from Miami, baby. I am excited to be here because you know what? I love being around successful people where you can talk freely about your dreams and your struggles, and they're not going to try to talk you out of your dreams just when it starts getting hard. They're the ones that start talking you into it. It is so important to be in environments like that. It helps you, you know, stay persistent on the path of your dreams. And it's also good to get out of your comfort zone. I live in a bubble in Orange County, California, and coming out of my comfort zone and being around different people in a new city, it just gets the creative juices flowing. So I decided to record this episode on how to avoid decision fatigue. Because as entrepreneurs, we struggle with this on the real, real. It's like at the end of the day, as a mom of three, I'm like, what am I going to make the kids for dinner? I, all of my decision energy has already been used on everything else. And I end up door dashing something. <laughs> I admitted it. I always do something healthy though. Okay. But it's because I'm like, I can't make any more decisions. <laughs> it's said that the average adult makes 35,000 decisions a day. So I'm just going to make up a number here for entrepreneurs based on that. Let's say as entrepreneurs, we make about 40,000 decisions a day. I don't know, but let me explain to you what decision fatigue is. Decision fatigue describes the impaired ability to make decisions and control behavior as a consequence of repeated acts of decision-making. So there's evidence that shows people experiencing decision fatigue, they have an impaired ability to make compromises and they really like to have a passive role in the decision-making process. So you know those people where you're like, can you just make a decision? You're a powerful person. Why can't you just tell me what you want? Mm, it's probably they're struggling with decision fatigue. And also the other side of that is when you're in decision fatigue, you sometimes make choices that are impulsive or irrational. <laughs> so think about muscle fatigue. What happens when you've been working out, your muscles get sore after you really have a you know, good pump. So as humans, we deplete our internal resources when we perform acts of self-regulation, which I like to call self-coaching. When we have to process a bunch of information to formulate a decision, that's when, you know, we've, we've really expended a lot of energy here. We just pumped, you know, a bunch of bicep curls in our brain. <laughs> so that depleted state of internal resources, okay, what happens is our executive function and our emotional regulation goes down. So we really need to be having this conversation as entrepreneurs. Okay, how do we avoid the decision fatigue? Well, it's about creating an outline for you to make good decisions. So I want you to think about that right now. Do you have an outline? So if a crisis comes across your desk, okay, here is the priority list. Here's my thought process where you don't really have to oh, start to think about it. No, I already know I'm going to go through my checks and balances here. So it's so important. That's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm excited that you're here. So let me tell you a little bit of a story. So my husband has been building this fintech company and he's been you know, bringing on employees, he's been taking on investors. There's been a lot of decisions that he's had to make. And as his wife, I've decided to come alongside him and help him use all of his internal resources to make really high level decisions in his side of his company. I don't want him to have to think about anything at home. So I've gotten him, himself meal prepped. I hired a stylist for him so he knows what to wear every single day. We hired an assistant to help make sure all of his travel plans are taken care of. I've really tried to think about all of those little things that can bog up time in your life, like in your daily life. So that way he can use all of that energy to when he has to hire, when he has to fire, when he has to, you know, make scaling decisions, all the stuff that you go through when you're going from eight figures to nine figures, shout out to my babe. So 
I want you just to think about that as um, for yourself. You know, you might have to be that support system for yourself. How do you put an amazing team in place so that way you can focus all of your really great life force on your decisions in your business that really, really will move the needle and all the other things that don't matter as much, but they seem to take up so much time in your brain. I know as females, we're thinking, oh my gosh, what should I wear? <laughs> Hire a stylist. There's like, you could do things for as little as $200 an hour, have somebody come into your closet and just put outfits together for you. So you can have a Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday outfit. Like we don't think about these things and we sometimes don't think that we are worthy of having support in that way. But if we could just focus on the things that actually matter in our business, we're gonna start making really high level decisions and start getting the results that we want. One of the challenges that we face as entrepreneurs when it comes to making decisions is, you know, all roads might lead to the result that you actually want. And you're going, okay, but which one is the best road for me? What I've done in the past to help me make you know, a quick decision when I, you know, have to, it's like, it almost feels like life or death sometimes. What I like to do is go straight back to my values. So what are your company values? If you don't have your company values down, take some time after this podcast episode and write down, okay, here are the values. And you don't need a list of 10. You need really three to four solid values that guide you in everything you do. So you make sure, okay, does it pass the value test first and foremost? The second test it needs to pass is the mission. Is it in alignment with the long-term mission? The reason why we're really here. So for me, my long-term mission is to make sure every single one of you listening into this podcast are accredited investors and that you're investing quarterly into something. Now, my favorite is real estate and lending, hard money lending. And if you want to know more about that, head over to Instagram right now and DM me the word lending. We'll talk about it. For me, I everything I do when it comes to the podcast, when it comes to making social media content, you know, it's easy for me to say yes or no to being on certain podcasts and hanging out with certain people. Does it help my audience become accredited investors or does it take them away from that? Okay. It'll be an easy test. What is your mission? Understand that. And then the third test is, does it fall into alignment with what I want my lifestyle to look like? So if I make this business decision right now, does it help add value to my lifestyle? So I'm going to walk you through this. I, this is very simple. Okay. You know, I've had this podcast for a while, almost six years. That is insane. By the time you're listening to this, we will be having our six year anniversary of the podcast. Okay. Absolutely insane. And I've loved every single minute of it. Actually, maybe, maybe some of it <laughs> I struggled. I was on the struggle bus, but I'm so happy I stuck with it. Well, about six months ago, I saw that the podcast numbers were going down and I go, okay, what is my value? My value is integrity, consistency, and family and faith. And so I really want to make sure to be giving that in every single episode. And then my mission, again, remember, is to help you guys become accredited investors. In order for you to be making at least $300,000 a year or have a million dollar net worth, excluding your primary home, you've, you've got to be making some money. So when I make podcast episodes, I'm thinking, how do I help them make more money? And I decided we're going to invest more into the podcast. We're actually going to, you know, start to do video, rent out a studio, fly in guests. We're going to make it bigger and better than ever. We needed a reinvention of the podcast. And I had to go through this whole process because, listen, the podcast is a huge commitment. And for the last, you know, five and a half years, I was recording every single Tuesday. I, I would record at least two episodes. And what I decided was we're actually, in order to make it cost effective, mission aligned, and the most effective use of my time so I can focus primarily on being a wife and a mom and running my funds, we are going to record the podcast in one day. 
And I had a team come alongside me to help me get all the guests and everything gets done in eight hours a month for the podcast. It was the best decision I made for growing Crafted Entrepreneur. And I'm so glad you're here and I hope you're loving the video aspect over on YouTube. Make sure to go check it out. Crafted Entrepreneur over there. <laughs> I want you to understand my decision making process in this. Uh, remember we go through the values that test, we go through the mission test, and then we go through the lifestyle test. And this was an easy yes in all three of these. But the one thing that I, I thought about was, okay, can I record <laughs> for eight hours in a day? How am I going to be able to physically do that? I'm not used to working eight hours in a day. <laughs> and what I've actually found is it gives me so much life to be around successful people for eight hours a month. It's like I get, it's like I had a little mini mastermind once a month and I get all juiced up and I'm ready to give more to my clients. I'm ready to give more to my family. So not only does it give life to every single one of you that are listening in, it's giving life to me. And so when you're making decisions to help you in your business, ask yourself that question. Is this going to give me life or is it going to drain my life? That should be the final test. So in order to avoid decision fatigue, remember you're going to create an outline to run a little test to make sure the decision you're gonna make passes all of those tests and then see what happens. Sometimes you're still going to make bad decisions. It's just going to happen. My son, you know I talk about him so much, my little hockey player, he's so cute. I've taught him to and his, actually his performance coach has taught him the same thing, that you're going to make bad decisions during a game. And you have to learn how to have really thick skin and just let stuff bounce off you. You can't be you know, reminiscing on the last play that you messed up on. You have to focus on the next shift in front of you. And that, again, is positive life force that is going to help you make positive decisions. So don't focus on the past. Learn the lesson from a failure, from a bad decision, write it down, <laughs> make it into a story, make it into some content, and then move on to the next best step you can take. So I hope you enjoyed this little mini episode on how to avoid decision fatigue. I talk a lot about this in chapter two of my new book called What Do You Really Want? Most people say you're one decision away from a totally different life. And I call that BS in the book because you make so many decisions throughout the day. You are a million decisions away from a totally different life. And that's something I need you to understand right now. What is the next best decision you can make to move you towards your dreams? Thank you so much for listening in.